just another beautiful Sunday. I was bragging to Nanny Emma about my wonderful adventure. Goodness, that's incredible. Weren't you scared? Of course not. Dad taught me. Why are you still here, Amy? Get ready for your piano lesson. Oh, it's mom. Again. She rushed in, snatched the phone out of my hand, said, Go now or I'll delete all these videos. Okay, just delete them. Nothing you do could ever make me care more about those noise-making logs. Then I leapt to my room. Always ballet and piano and violin. What kind of mother forces her kid to do things they don't like? Ugh, I won't back down this time. I have my videos all backed up online anyway. She can't control me. What? Huh? What else? I turned around to see mom drop to her knees. No, no, it can't be. Just this morning, my husband was still. Dad had suffered a stroke on a trip to survey a gem mine and they couldn't reach the hospital in time to save him. How could that be? He's not only my dad, he's my bestest friend. I bet the news is just as hard to deal with for my sister Briona, as she was always the one who went on business expeditions with him. He's the best dad we could ever ask for, but he's gone. And it felt like Emma and Briona were the only people who really loved me now. Just last week, dad was sitting here next to me. Darling, it's not good for you to just sit home and wallow. Why don't you get out of here for a few days? And go where? Next week, your sister is going on a trip to a new mine. You can tag along. I'm sure she'd enjoy the company. I don't know. I don't like business trips. I'll bet you can make time for some adventures while you're there. There's bound to be hiking and things you like to do. Since when does mom support any of my hobbies? She really must not want me around, huh? If that's what she wants. Okay then, sure. We were already running late for our flight when Briona realized she had forgotten her passport. I offered to stay with her, but she insisted that at least one of us should make the flight. She assured me she'd be back in time for the next flight and we'd see each other soon. So I hugged her goodbye and headed toward the gate. While waiting for Briona to arrive, I've already booked myself a skydiving session, as recommended by the hotel's receptionist. This thing is right up my alley, but... The weather doesn't look too good. Are you sure this is normal? 100%. That's what makes it special here. People come from all over just for these winds. This is what you call extreme sports, isn't it? Yeah, right. Bring it on. So on the count of three, I was free falling. It was an unrivaled exhilaration. The ultimate thrill. Until I deployed my parachute. Instead of gently floating to the ground, I was carried away by gust after gust of wind. Then, I blacked out. I slowly opened my eyes. What has happened? Am I in heaven now? I look around to see nothing but a beach, framed by a dense forest. This place was clearly deserted. Maybe not so deserted. There I saw a group of tribal people, dressed in strange clothes, wielding spears. I tried to move closer to get a better look, but game over. They all turned to my direction. I ducked down immediately, but their footsteps grew louder. I held my breath, wishing for a miracle. Oh no, this is definitely my end. But unexpectedly, the hand pushed me down further into the bushes, as if they were trying to hide me. I looked up and saw it was a man talking to the other in a native language. The talking stopped. Seemed like the rest had left. Thank you, thank you so much, handsome mister. Sorry for bothering you. I'm gonna get going now. I may have let you off, but the others won't. These people are aggressive and will attack any intruder. Oh, he can speak English? Nice, I'm safe now. As I followed him through the forest, he stayed quiet, but I couldn't help brimming with questions. Where did you come from? Why are you here? You're not a local, right? Are you a scientist? Can you at least tell me your name? Silas. Okay, Silas. May I borrow your phone to call my sister? She'll pick me right up. Do you think I'd be here if I had a phone? I also got here by an accident a couple of years ago. Living like one of them is the only way to survive around here. At least until someone comes to save us. No, no, that can't be. It wasn't a deserted island, but I was certainly deserted on it. We arrived at a cave on the other side of the island where, according to Silas, the locals never roam around. You'll be safe here. I'll be right back. I didn't need him to take care of me. He may have stayed here for years, but I won't. I'll escape. It wouldn't be so hard to build a raft, right? So I gathered some logs. You hungry? 
Silas came back and threw something wrapped in leaves. Ah! Get these gross bugs away from me! I would rather starve. <laughs> these are a delicacy. You have no taste. Stay here. Don't do anything stupid. It's getting dark, so I had no choice but to go to sleep hungry in the stuffy, mucky cave. There's dirty moss and bugs everywhere. Ew! At the break of dawn, I couldn't stand it any longer. I got up to continue working on my raft. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Now goodbye, stupid island. But no, my beautiful raft crumbled and sank as soon as it touched the water. Feeling defeated, I laid on the sand in frustration. Suddenly, I heard a whistle. Hmm, Silas? How am I supposed to get up there? Am I his pet or something? What gives, making me walk all the way up here? Mind you, I haven't eaten in a day. Then let's go get breakfast, but get changed first. He then took me to a river and showed me how to catch fishes. What do you mean I'm supposed to get my breakfast with this stick? Watch and learn, princess. Then Silas jabbed the spear into the water again and again until it's full of fishes. Okay, wanna challenge me? Psst, that's easy. Only, it's not. It's like the fishes could read my mind. It's been like half an hour and still nothing. There's plenty of fish in the sea, but somehow you can't catch any. Don't expect anything from my batch. Whatever, I'm not hungry. I don't need him. My sister will surely come and get me out of here on our private chopper soon. But Silas was really rubbing it in, grilling fish in front of me until the delicious smell filled my nose. But no way I'd give in to this. This is your best bet. Unless you want to try grilled rat or cicada or... Fine, gimme. <laughs> when we first met, I thought you were cute. But after seeing this... Ugh, this smug Tarzan. Full now? <laughs> then it's time for work. Work? So you're only keeping me around to be your slave? Do you want to keep living in that cave? You shouldn't steal the bugs home like that. We continued to walk deeper into the jungle until we reached this huge tree. We should build you a shelter up there. You'll be safe from the wildlife and the natives don't go to this area. Does it need to be up so high? If they are that dangerous, how come you survive here this long? Are you playing me? <sighs> I got really lucky. I was swept away by a storm while sailing along. And when I washed up here, the natives were so ready to, you know, send me to God. But thankfully, the chief's daughter, Nora, desperately begged her father to let me live. And for some reason, he did. That wouldn't happen to just anyone. Oh, this Nora girl must have been caught in some love at first sight. That's why you stayed here all this time. So romantic. Stop wasting time. Let's get to work. Building a shelter proved to be more difficult than expected. And Silas proved to be quite bossy. Hand me the big branch. Bigger. Amy. Rattan rope. Give me another knife. Just wait a second. Let me catch my breath. You were so determined a few minutes ago. Go take a break. I want to finish this before sunset. I sat there, watching Silas work as the afternoon turned to dusk. And I must have dozed off for a while, as when I woke up, the treehouse was done. To be honest, it was better than what I expected from him. But where is he? I looked around, but the only thing I found was his scribbles on the ground. Stay here. I was glad to have my own shelter, but there was nothing to do to pass the time. Suddenly, there was a sound. It must be coming from the tribe. I followed the direction of the sound, hoping not to get lost. But soon enough, I found a clearing, where a group of the natives were gathered around a huge bonfire. They were chanting something. Others were dancing, others cheered. It looked like they were having fun, which hit me with a wave of homesickness. For a moment, I was so lost in their celebration that I forgot I was being stealthy. Uh-oh, not again. I could have tried to run, but I froze. Thankfully, Silas stepped forward, telling the others to stay. As he approached, we made eye contact briefly before he signaled people that the coast was clear, then gave me a quick wink before returning to the fire. Shortly after I returned home, Silas did too. Are you trying to get yourself killed? I'm not kidding when I say it will be very bad if they find out about you. I'm sorry. I'm just scared and lonely. I'm all by myself and my family must be looking for me everywhere. To my surprise, Silas came over to comfort me. Everything's gonna be alright. I got you. Who? Where? How are you here? She clearly didn't know much English, but her weapon pointed at me was enough to know that she was angry. Silas immediately ran over to calm her down. I didn't know what they were saying, but she left, though not before giving me one last dirty look. Turned out it was Nora. Oh, what a relief! An acquaintance! Why didn't you tell me earlier? 
Don't celebrate too soon. Nora insisted you leave immediately. Oh, she knows how? Then I don't have much of a choice whether I stay or leave here, do I? Don't worry, I'll take care of Nora. And he must have, because the days passed by and the natives never came to drive me out. Silas continued to visit me every day, bringing cloves, teaching me how to pick fruit, swing on branches. Soon the work turned to play. He started teaching me tribal dances and vocabulary, and we visited the waterfalls and lakes around the island. It's pretty fun. It felt like going on adventures with my dad again. Confident in my knowledge of the island, I started to venture out on my own. But Silas didn't prepare me for this. A leopard showed itself and slowly moved towards me. I tried to stay composed to find a way to escape, even though every bit of me was freaking out. When suddenly, Nora jumped down from nowhere and petted the leopard as if it was her little kitten. She gave it a fish and the kitty just happily ran away. Thank you so much. I'm Amy, Silas's friend. Silas, mine. Yes, he's all yours. I hate him so much. I wouldn't even touch a strand of his hair. Silas? Ew. No, no. Nora huffs loudly before leaving. Here. Or maybe I shouldn't share it with you since you hate me so much. Oh, stop it. My life was on the line. It was not time to confess my feelings. Oops. What did I just say? I continued to stutter, making lame excuses. You're not even listening to me, are you? You haven't heard a thing I've said. Huh? What did you say? He grinned and left without another word. I couldn't stop smiling at the silly bracelet. The island isn't really that bad. I have the freedom I've always wanted. I wake up with the sunrise and have things like this. This really is the life. One day, the sun had already set and Silas still hadn't come over. I was starting to worry when he arrived with... Nora? Silas said she wanted to bring me some clothes. I was relieved that she finally wanted to make peace, but her expression confused me. When I thanked her, she didn't say a thing or even smile. We sat around the fire. Silas and I talked about one thing after another. Oops, we might have forgotten about Nora, but the language barrier really is a big deal, you know. And so she just sat there sulking. Suddenly, she stood up, causing hot coal to splatter all over me. Silas hastily helped me clean my hands as Nora stormed off. Is she okay? Maybe you should go follow her. But Silas reassured me she'd be fine and went to find aloe vera sap for my burns. I think she misinterprets our relationship. Does she? Cause I too thought there was something going on. I was too surprised, but managed to gather myself enough to reply clumsily. Says who? I don't think you've formally courted me, sir. Tomorrow will be our first date then, in the mushroom forest. What do you say? I was glad Silas had saved this place for a date because everything about it was curious and beautiful. Before long, I had wandered far ahead of Silas. I knew I had gone too far, but something drew me deeper into the forest. I walked along this cave as I thought I saw a ray of light at the end. And there really was. The cave was not a dead end, but it was just covered by vines. And, oh my god, this is like a whole nother paradise that hasn't been discovered. And there was wreckage of an old helicopter. I immediately called Silas over and he seemed to not have any idea about this either. We explored the helicopter the whole morning, but it was nothing except a rusted hunk of junk. We were about to leave when Silas hit a button and the radio came to life. We had found our new hobby. Since then, we went there every day, listening to music and pre-recorded content on the stereo. But eventually, we somehow got a faint radio signal. And for the first time, we had some connection to the outside world. I normally didn't care so much for news, but my interest was piqued by a familiar sounding story. Right after the death of the biggest name in the gem industry, his wife was kicked out of the house. Any relations to the missing of the youngest daughter? Who will be the winner of the fight for his inheritance? Was this real? Were they talking about my family on the radio? Why would my mother leave? I then recalled my mother's strange behavior before I left. She, for the first time, encouraged me to go on an adventure, and I somehow ended up here. Was it even a coincidence? Oh no, how could a mother do this to her own daughter? Calm down, I believe there's more to this. Don't jump to conclusion yet. Personally, I don't think tigers eat their young. Maybe, maybe not. There's only one way to find out. I need to go home, immediately. <laughs>